All right, Jeffrey, I leave it up to you. Good All night. right, hi. Thanks, thanks, James. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, all the all very lovely uncle aunties. Uh, my name is Jeffrey. Uh, I'm from Homage, yeah. and Homage is actually a healthcare company. And I wish I will explain to you later, like uh, where are we from and what we do. Uh, so so basically, um, let me just go on to the next one if you can. Yes. So if can you can you all see my screen? Yes, right. Can I get a yes? Yes. Okay. Good. Right. So, well, so Homage, a healthcare company, right? So what do we do essentially? And, and what does it have to do with, with all uh, uncle aunties that, that comes uh, to this uh, Zoom meeting today, this morning, right? Is that, yes, it has a lot to do with you all uh, because uh, as a healthcare company, we provide various different services, right? So uh, which later on, Ms. Wong, which I'll, I'll introduce her, uh, she'll explain more in detail, but I'll just run through it very briefly. And we, as, as we know that as we age, right, we need uh, all sorts of like, different assistance. So one of our main services that we provide is actually, uh, we call it assist, Assisted Daily Living, ADL in short. Uh, so that consists of medication reminders, uh, showering, grocery shopping, some simple cooking, uh, even as simple as companionship, which can actually send uh, a qualified caregiver uh, to your home. So, th so that's the main uh, service that we provide. So for some uh, more uh, special cases, right, we can also provide nurses to do different, like say, for example, medical uh, administration uh, feeding. Or if, if, for example, if you have uh, some form of wound, right, uh, our nurses are also able to help with the wound dressing uh, and so on and so forth. So I will not go to details. Uh, so that is uh, something that we can do. And we also do have um, therapy, uh, which is comes in three different types of therapy, right? Physiotherapy, uh, speech therapy, and even occupational therapy, which can which can send these therapists to your home to help you with these uh, different needs uh, uh, should the need arise. Right. So now, then you may then ask, right? Hey, Jeffrey, you know there are many other agencies or even uh, healthcare companies out there, right? Which I can actually engage these services as well. But how, how is yours different from the ones, uh, the ones out there right now? So homage, yes, we are different. Uh, we are different because we are tech enabled. So these, these are words we use, right? We, we, are, we are using smart technology over here. So now when, you, when we talk about um, having a caregiver or nurses to come into your home, right? Uh, to really help you with your, your daily living. You want someone that you are comfortable with. So that is where right, um, our team of care advisors will then also check with you or even your children that uh, what sort of, what sort of uh, language you're most comfortable with, uh, what sort of need that you, you need. So, so that is where right, we have a pool of caregivers and nurses, right? And our smart technology is able to match the most suitable uh, care professional to you. So, so that is where to really increase the, the familiarity, the comfortable level uh, with, with, with the service that you're, you're going to receive, right? And, and also uh, on top of that, uh, if we, we, our platform, right, we have a mobile app as well, which your children can use. Uh, we also have a, a, a web uh, a portal, which your children can use, whereby all the payments all can be done very easily on those. So you get, you get all, the, all the proper invoices, all things, it's all clear. So, so that is the, also the difference that we, we are. Uh, and then the last bit, right, is that we have this real-time uh, reporting. So say, for example, if let's say your children are overseas, right, and then there's a caregiver that comes in. So what, what we require the caregiver or even the nurses, right, to do after every visit is that um, they will need to write a report, a, a report summary. So then to, to, so that your children knows what exactly happened uh, during the visit in itself. So that report can be accessed through the mobile app, which your, your, your children can actually download and, and use it. So that, uh, so that is a 24-7 real-time reporting happening from there. So at least uh, your children can have a peace of mind when a caregiver comes in, because maybe some of you, your children are, are not in Malaysia. It could be in overseas or in UK. Uh, for some of you, right? So that is where uh, our mobile technology is enabling all these uh, things to happen. Yeah. So maybe uh, this, these are some of the milestones that I, I want to share with you all. Um, so Homage is actually launched in, uh, in Singapore in 2016. So uh, three years later, we started our operation in Malaysia. 
And in fact, this year, we started to also went, we went into Australia uh, beginning of this year. And just August this year, about two months ago, we started our operation in Ipoh. So at this point of time in Malaysia, we are operating in Klang Valley, KL, KL Selangor. Uh, we are operating in Penang. We are operating in Johor Bahru. And our latest expansion is actually in Ipoh in itself. So that is where uh, we are able to render our, our care services to Green Acres Retirement Village. And 2021, which is actually now the, the quarter for the last quarter, uh, we are actually planning very aggressively to expand to different major cities in Malaysia itself. So we are covering from north to south and even to Sabah Sarawak as well. So that is in, actually in our expansion plans. And uh, we, are, we, are gonna, we, are, we are growing very, very big. So this is Malay for Malaysia. And in terms of other countries, we are, we are actually currently starting up in Japan as well. As some of you may know that Japan is one of the most aged country in the world. Almost about 30% of their population is above 65 years old. So that means you're talking about one in three people is above 65 years old. So, so that is where we are in Japan as well to really serve the, the, el the elders uh, in Japan. So we are expanding very rapidly and only because we know that aging is the aging uh, issue is, is happening uh, very rapidly. So that's why we also have to move very fast in order to serve this need. Uh, of the community over here. Yeah. So with this, right, I want to introduce uh, our very own care specialist, uh, Ms. Wong Yi Hui. So she's our in-house nurse with more than 20 years experience. And she has actually worked in various different countries, not just Malaysia. Uh, she has worked, she has spent over 10 years in, in UK. She has also spent quite a number of years in Singapore. So her, her, her experience is really vast. And that is where I think she's the best person to really talk about um, aging and how can we really age uh, with quality. Yeah, not just, oh, you know, we grow old and things like that. But I think there are many ways that we can uh, age gracefully and with help from different uh, individuals, right, such as home age, right, uh, everyone can actually age uh, very gracefully and ha happily as well. Yeah, so with this, I, I pass the time to Ms. Wong. Ms. Wong, take it away. Yeah, hi, hi. Uh, my name is uh, Miss Wong, or you can call me Yi Hui. So I'm a nurse, uh, as what Jeff has introduced, and uh, I do have some experience working overseas and in my own country as well. So um, the topic that I'm going to talk about today is... Um, uh, Jeff, can we go to the next slide? Oh, can I? Okay, it's aging with health. Lah. So we we'll just want to uh, go briefly on uh, how do we, uh, what is aging and what is health means to us and how can home age actually help you with uh, different services. All right. So um, next slide. So as we can see right now today, uh, people are actually living longer than, than, than before compared to like, you know, 20, 30 years ago um, with the advanced healthcare system because now uh, the technology is getting more and more advanced. There are more and more new treatment coming up, uh, you know. Um, so people tends to, uh, people can, can actually live longer and enjoy life longer. But uh, however, as we age, right, it's actually aging leads... Um, to a lot of uh, problem uh, and also leads to a gradual decrease in physical and mental capacity. La. And also, uh, as we grow old, uh, we know that we also have a growing risk of develop some chronic diseases and eventually or sometimes we will decrease in self-care ability as well. So, can we go on the next slide? So, as we age, these are the some of the common diseases that we will experience in, 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 in our life. So, for example, cardiovascular diseases. So, um, things like hypertension or stroke or, you know, if you get heart failure, heart problem, all these actually fall under cardiovascular diseases. So, having uh, cardiovascular diseases is actually one of the lifestyle diseases. Um, of course, it could be inherited, but a lot of time it's to do with lifestyle as well, things that we eat, you know, how much do we exercise or how often do we do things. All this will actually lead to a cardiovascular diseases. And the second thing to, uh, that is quite common uh, as, as uh, we age, we will experience is a dementia. So um, things that fall under dementia will be, for example, like Alzheimer's disease. Um, if you have a stroke, uh, your chance of getting dementia will increase as well. Uh, if you have things like Parkinson, we will also cause dementia. And the other thing that uh, um, we will experience as we grow old will be uh, diabetes. Um, because um, as we know, diabetes is also another lifestyle disease. Um, if you do not um, control your lifestyle, 
are very well or it doesn't control your food or, or your exercise, it will eventually lead to diabetes as well. And things like diabetes and cardiovascular disease, they are all a uh, contributing factor for dementia. So your risk of getting dementia will actually be higher if you have a uh, cardiovascular disease and uh, diabetes. And some other common diseases such as uh, cancer and bone and joints problem is what we will experience uh, as we grow older. So um, some of us might experience uh, these diseases like not only one of them, we might experience two or three of them all comes together. Um, so when you have all this problem coming in together, right? Does it mean that uh, you cannot live like a normal person? The answer is actually no. The quality of life still can be very good as you are, uh, even though you, you develop all these diseases. Um, can we go on the next slide, Jeff? Okay, so some, every, as we know, every individual is different, right? Some of you with all this uh, um, condition, you might still live a very high functioning uh, life. You still can go for a walk. You know, you still can do bicycle like 30 years old. So, so it's, it's, everybody is varies. Lah. But some people might need more help and more assistance as, as, as they go, right? And as we know, um, elderly, one, one common problem that elderly often face is fall, fall down. Right, um, because uh, as we as we get older, our uh, motor skill tends to decrease, and then uh, our joint ten joints tend to be weaker, and then uh, the chances of us getting fall will be higher. So um, and from my experience is uh, we have seen a lot of elderly uh in my past, I I mean in 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 this or in all my years in nursing, and the common problem is um when they fall down um, they tends to develop fracture. Right, or they might break their hips, break their bones, or you know, sometimes break their femur, neck of femur, fracture of neck of femur is one of the common uh, consequences when you had a fall. So after you fall, um, you will need uh, a lot more help compared to before. And sometimes if you develop fracture, um, the ability of you getting back to a uh, um, function getting back to your, your previous function um, might not be as good as, as before. Lah. That means uh, you might not be able to walk as well as before um, or you might not be able to uh, do things like you used to be before, right? So that is very common. And you might feel, uh, some, of, some of you who, who get the diseases or who as you grow old, you might more, feel more frail compared to before. And some of you might experience uh, incontinence or delirium, you know, uh, you might get confused, uh, especially during the night or when you have some sort of infection or brain problem. Um, and also as your mobility uh, decrease, uh, you will also uh, develop things like pressure sore. Right, so this um, but with all this problem, right, uh, as home age, we still believe that uh, you can actually lead, uh, live a quality life. Um, how do we do it? Is um, by giving you a proper preventive uh, measure. First, we must prevent all the problem from happening or catch it right before it happens. Or when it, we, we is we are talking about uh, early detection, right? So. And then the other thing is, when things happen, how can we give you an adequate care support, right? Because we believe that preventive measures and receiving adequate care support is really crucial on, on how do you uh, experience the old age. Lah. Okay, so now we talk about the services that we have. So first thing, we will look at uh, prevent, prevention. How do we prevent you uh, from uh, getting sick or how do we detect uh, the early onset of a uh, problem, right? So the common service that we introduce is a check-in visit service uh, where you can, can come in regularly on a regular basis. For example, um, our common check-in announced today that we have with other clients is um, daily. Uh, they will ask us to go and check in with them uh, for one to two hours, especially for people who is staying by themselves, right? So when we go and do the check-in visits, what we will do is uh, we'll do a blood pressure, we can uh, check your heart rate, blood sugar, temperature, etc. Make sure all your vital sign is up to date. And the reason why we want to take all this um, vital sign and record it down is because it's important for us to keep a baseline, right? So when we have a baseline um, and then when we then it's easy for us to detect an abnormality. So what they what typically happen is when they check your blood pressure every day and one day, if they detect the blood pressure is abnormal, then they will try to look into the uh, problem. So maybe, hey, 
today, you know, you feel extra stressful because of this, that, uh, that's why your blood pressure is high. Or if things continue, then we can give you appropriate advice. Hey, maybe you should go and have a look at the doctor, right? Uh, uh, go and see the doctor, seek medical attention, right? So by doing this, it actually can help you to pick up uh, uh, signs and symptoms of, 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 of uh, before the disease kick in. We can actually pick it up so that you can actually go and uh, seek advice before, before it actually happens. And also, we also check in on the general well-being um, and the safety of the of 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 the elderly, uh, most importantly. So our typical example would be um we 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 hear a lot of story where elderly staying by themselves, and then they had a fall, they had a fall in the toilet, there was they were not able to get up, and then what happened? They have to wait for a few hours until the family come back, uh, before they can actually help them up. Right, so it is very common for elderly now today that they are staying at home, uh, during the daytime or you know, uh, until lunchtime before the children can actually come back, rush back to the house and check on them. So this period of time is actually very crucial. Um, that's where the check-in visits come in. We have to go in and check in, make sure when the elderly is spending this time by themselves, we make sure they are safe during that time. And at the same time, we check their baseline. If there's any abnormality, we will uh, actually uh, raise concern and then you can go and seek for appropriate medical health. Huh? And then the other thing that uh, we do a lot is uh, staying active and companionship to our elderly uh, um, uh, group of people. So um, especially for the past two years, like, you know, MCO kick in. Um, I, I, I'm not sure how you guys experience it because you guys live in a community. But uh, from what we see, right, um, there's actually a lot of elderly um, being affected quite a lot a lot during this MCO period because you know you 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 are not able to go out they, they lose their ability to go out and socialize they cannot you know go to the kopi tiam you know drink kopi and chit chat or you know I'm not sure you're allowed to go to the clubhouse um so so all this actually lead to social isolation right and from what we observe is for the past two years um when elderly suffer from social is isolation the first thing that impacted is their mental health right if the elderly is already demented, they get even more demented. Their symptom of dementia deteriorates so fast. Some of them is even over um, over the period of two months. Um, they did not go out. Um, the family didn't spend enough time interact interact with them. They don't have enough activity. Um, their mental mental health just deteriorates so fast that they can't even recognize people over a period of two months, or, or they lose their ability of self care. So. Therefore, and it's also various study also shows that, you know, constant brain stimulation and constant regular social activity is very important for elderly. So you see, you guys feeling so happy, right? Um, every day you can go to a clubhouse and talk to your friend. You see, that's how you keep yourself happy and 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 um uh, healthy because when you're happy you're, you're healthy in that sense already so um that's where we can come in also for you or uh, for those that who want an extra activity or uh, we actually have a various planned activity for example we can come to the house or we can do like 30 minutes or um, my, my typical or uh, structured plan will be we do 30 minutes of um physical activity for example we can go for a walk um we can do some tai chi like what you guys say uh, and then we can uh do 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 some uh, uh cycling you know uh on the sport cycling and things like that and then we can spend another 30 minutes on the brain power i always call it a brain power activity where um we do various brain stimulation activity. For example, um, you know, hand hand coordination that you change your hand like this, left, right, left, right, or you know, two one, two one, just just to keep your, your brain stimulate. Um, and then uh, we also will introduce some uh, fine motor skill, like for example, um, I think you guys can actually um not maybe not all of you, but some of you can actually try out um train up your toe muscle, right? You know, use your toe to go and pinch things, pick up something using your toes. So those are the things that we actually will plan and come in and do together with you. Because after all, I think um, uh, it's quite hard for you to do all these things by yourself and you know, you don't have people to cheer you on and motivate or motivate you on and that's where we come in. Lah. And also, we also will spend uh, a lot of time uh, playing games with, with, with the elderly group of people. 
So the games that we are looking at, it can be various. Uh, sometimes we play video games, or uh, you know, if Candy Crush, if we are good at that. And sometimes we, we play poker game. And we do have elderly who uh, like to gamble. We will also, you know, play poker game and, and gamble at the same time. But of course, no real money involved. But those are the things that we can introduce to uh, keep, keep you guys active and keep your company um, to, and then to, to, to stimulate the brain uh, basically is to really keep the physical and the mind in a very active state and in a still functioning well state. All right. And then the other thing that we can do is also uh, for people who are less able who maybe you need uh, ADL um, care, like what Jeff said. So for example, we can come in and help you to shower. Uh, we can do sponging for you if let's say you're not able to go to the toilet to shower. And we can also do nail and hair, hair care. We can do simple haircut. I mean, not all the caregiver can do it, but some of the caregiver, uh, they can do simple haircut. And of course, they can trim your toenail or your fingernails for you. And also, uh, those who is not able to go out to do shopping, we can actually go and do grocery shopping and bring back to, to, to you. You just give them the list. And if you feel like it, they can also bring you up you know, to the to the shopping place and do the shopping together and give you the uh, appropriate assistance and toileting. And night surveillance is something that we do as well because uh, as I mentioned earlier on, during the night is the time where uh, elderly fall the most because, uh, you know, when you get up, they're still sleepy and sometimes you might trip on fall and, and fall on dim lightings and stuff like that. So night surveillance is something that we will do. We'll come in, um, Keep your come uh, check on you uh, over the night and then we stay there to make sure all your needs are attended to. And then we also have meal arrangement. They can come in and do simple cooking. Uh, and then they can also order food for you, help you to order food, help you to tap out from outside. And also we have medication reminder. All right, so those are the simple idea that we can do. Lah. And then the other thing, uh, the most important thing is uh, we actually can provide nursing care for you at home. Right. We can provide uh, anything from simple to complex nursing care. For example, suction, we can give you medication, uh, check your blood glucose. If you, let's say you have a tube feeding, uh, we can change your feeding tube for you. And then we can do the catheterization for you, change of uh, catheter for you if there's need. And we will also do stomach care injection or infusion at home. Lah. And the other special thing that we have is actually wound management. So when we talk about wound management, uh, we are not just talking about coming and, you know, wash your, wash your wound and clean your wound for you. We are talking about, we do have a doctor who is specialized in wound care. He will actually look at the wound uh, through picture. So the care pro will go to the house and take the picture and then uh, he will order what is the best product that we can use in order to promote wound healing. And then we will also monitor the wound uh, on a regular basis, uh, review them on a regular basis. And of course, we come and do the dressing for you on a daily basis. Lah. So that's our wound management program. Um, and then the other one is uh, we can also provide post-hospitalization care. So for example, if let's say you're admitted to the hospital, you had a major surgery, when you come home, you don't know what to do or you do not know what you need, that's when we can come in, actually can do a thorough assessment and give you a suggestion on what you need and what care do you need. And when you come home, we continue the care from there. So those are the things that we can do, all right? So uh, the other good thing that or popular service that we have is medical escort. So uh, what is medical escort? Medical escort basically means uh, we have the care pro or, or nurses or caregiver come in, uh, maybe drive you or take a grab to the hospital to go through the whole hospital appointment with you. And then what do they do is they can actually, for example, if you don't feel comfortable talking to a doctor or you do not understand what the doctor is telling you or you know you have problem uh, conveying the message from the doctor to your family, that's where the nurses or caregiver can come in. They can help you to uh, remember what the doctor said. They will, can help you to write down what the doctor said. And also they can help you with collecting the medication. They can help you to go and you know pay your bill. And then they can also help to communicate what the doctors uh, is saying to the family members. So that, that's one thing that is, is uh, we find it very, very useful for a lot of our elderly uh, client is medical escort. Um, they can even bring you to a PPV center to have your injection, you know, vaccination and come back. And after that, um, settle you at home. Yeah. So who, who are our nurses? 
like we say, oh, we call them K-Pro, you know, K-Professional. So that's how we are um, identified, or that's how we address our, our, our nurses and caregivers. So they made out of two groups. One of them, uh, one group is professional nurses. Um, so they work, they are still currently actively working in the healthcare system. Um, they can be working in a hospital, in a clinic, in a KKM. Uh, basically, they are still, uh, they, are, they still have a very valid and up-to-date nursing registration. Uh, or, and they have their different specialties as well. So they are all part-time, our K-Pro are all part-time. So they will pick up the case when they are free. Right, and then we have another set of people who is a trained caregiver. So who are caregivers? So caregivers can be anyone, right, from all walks of life. Uh, they can be even uh for people like you or you know your children who who um they have experience in looking after uh elderly and they want to continue this as a career and they will join us as a caregiver. So of course, uh before they start, we give them a very stringent interview. We make sure these people are um are at, have the right heart and the right attitude to do this this job. And also we will provide them with necessary training. We also, we actually have a uh, training partners um in KLs and in Ipo and in Penang as well to help to train uh this set of uh, uh caregiver, make sure they have the right right set of skill and we even teach them how to do CPR, right? And then we also will have an online regular session uh, to teach them to up to update their, their skill uh, for especially for caregiver. So this is uh this, these are who our care pro are and also now pandemic time we also take necessary uh measure we make sure everybody has got double mask and face shield during their visits and uh they, they also will do a weekly saliva test lah. Only when it's tested negative, uh, then they can continue the, the visit. Lor. Okay. So uh, these are just some of the highlight, highlights that uh, uh, that features our company and our K-Pro, um, what they do and who they are. And then uh, we also have a lot of a next slide. We also have a lot of positive reviews from a previous customer. So basically, uh, the takeaway here is for most of the uh, customer feedback is uh, uh, we are flexible and we are affordable as well. And most importantly, uh, we provide professional nurses who actually suits the, the, the care. Lah. And of course, we also uh, look into uh, reviews and we look into a patient uh, client requ requirement all the time. Uh, we will monitor their progress um, and we take every feedback very seriously. Lah. So that is, uh, I think I will end here. Um, do you guys have any questions on the service required or, or the service that we provide? No? Yes, I see. Yes. You. yes. That's everybody can start unmute themselves and start talking. Okay. Yeah, I have a question. Can you okay. give us a feel of your prices? For example, how much for mm. the check-in visit, how mm. much for the staying active service, the okay. medical okay. So basically the prices are uh, we, we start from hourly uh, charges. So all our um price is start from hourly charges. So it range from uh, 22 to 38 uh, ringgit per hour. It depending on what kind of service do you need. Right. So if let's say you just need a very simple services, uh, for example, check-in visit or ADL, uh, then it, the range will be between 22 to 30. Be why, why is there a range? Because uh, the company are uh, selling the, the plan in the package. So if you buy a lot of hours at one go, for example, if you buy 200 hours um, to, to be finished within like a few months time, uh, you will be only charged at 22 ringgit per hour. So if let's say you do, you just want to try out a few uh visits, uh, then it will be charged like thirty ringgit per hour lah. So it, it, the the price range is really uh, uh varies depending on the needs. First on the needs, on the complexity, and then third is on the hours that you purchase. But it's anything range between twenty two to thirty eight. Can I can I say something? Yes. The buying package can it, is it transferable? Let's say I buy a package, I don't I don't. I feel that I don't need to use. Can I transfer to that person? I uh, no, I think not. No, it's not transferable. Not yeah. transferable. Mm. Yeah. But it can be. Let's say, like for example, um, uh, like William, right? You, you and your uh wife staying together, so you can buy one package and we go in to look after two person. If these two person are not too uh difficult to to 
not not too high equity. That's what we can do on the same household. Um, but it has to be identified early who are the care recipient. Did that, did that answer your questions? Yes. Okay, so maybe uh, you guys will, will also interested to know, like, for example, you know, who, who are the nurses, like, uh, where are they come from, um, are they a, a foreigner, um, so that's one thing that we can assure is uh, they are all local Malaysian, uh, we only take local Malaysian, we don't have foreign trained staff, and that's why uh, a lot of them actually speak your language, lah. so we will also try our best to match your language uh, to to. Your, your preferred language to you. Um, yeah. So that's who our K-Pros are, are like. I think maybe to, to, to help you all a bit, we, we actually prepared a FAQ, frequently answered question, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, you can just go through that. If you have additional questions, then uh, we can definitely answer them. So if I can move to the next slide here. Yeah, mm. yeah so like I say, who are the k -Pro? Um, they're all local Malaysian professional nurses or trained caregiver and then they work on a part-time basis and then they take up the job during their free times. So that's who they are. And you might want to ask if the care hour flexible, uh, definitely yes, the care hour is completely flexible. You can start your care hour from as low as one hour and extend all the way la, until 24 hours. Right? And then you can also decide uh, on the visit timing. But of course, sometimes we might come back to you to discuss with you like, you know, hey, I might not be able to find people at this hour. Are you willing to change to other hours? So, but definitely it is completely flexible and you don't have to commit like, or uh, like, you know, hey, when I come, I will, you, you have to do at least four hours of visit. It is not like that. And charges um, by hour, 22 to 38, depending on the needs and complexity of the care. Uh, of course, uh, this one I forgot to include is, let's say you need a extra complex procedure. For example, uh, you know, complex nursing care, the, the charges will be different. Uh. I believe it's like uh, 120 ringgit per procedure. But they, they have a plan that uh, uh, package that can all be uh, uh, bundled together and you get a cheaper price. So, but that one, um, I think I might not be in a good position to talk about it because uh, the care advisor will be the one normally, uh, they know the, the, the package and the bundle very well. But the base price is from 22 to 38. Hmm. Maybe we can go on the next slide. Jeff, do you have anything to add? Yeah, maybe I can just add on to the whole entire journey of how do you engage a uh, home age services, right? Is that mm. because every every everyone will have a different need and requirement. So that is where, right, is either yourself or your spouse or even your children, right, will make a call to the, our hotline. Uh, I think our hotline, yes, our hotline. Then um, then our care advisor will then obtain a case background. So maybe you think that, oh, I actually need uh, 12 hours care, 24 hours care, but uh, you, but actually you may not need that. So that is where, right, um, our care specialist like Miss Wong over here will then do a care assessment. So this care assessment is very, very important because uh, with her experience, she will then uh, assess your condition. Every individual is different, right? She will then, as, after, she, after her assessment, she will then let you know that whether or not you need, you really need that 12 hours or 24 hours. Maybe, um, she can identify that actually you only need that four or five hours per day. Yeah. Because the other, the other, the other times something else can be arranged, right? So, so that is where uh, the care ass assessment is important for us to really render the, the appropriate care that you actually need. Yeah. It may not be customized. Or, mm. Yeah, customized or 24 hours, but maybe just at four or five hours. It really depends. Yes. Yeah. So, so after, so after that, after the care assessment, then only uh, our care advisor will then uh, advise whether should you go for that 60 hours care plan or 100 hours care plan because that really depends on the duration of each visit and the frequency of each visit. So then, then we have to really plan out the whole entire care for you. So all these things is being taken care of by our care advisor and our care specialist, Ms. Wong over here. And maybe you may ask, how many care specialists you have, right? So at this point of time, uh, 
on the northern part, uh, so Miss Wong is based in Penang. Uh, in Penang, we have two uh, care specialists. In Ipoh itself, we also have two care specialists, uh, which all of them are all uh, very experienced nurses. Yeah. So uh, everyone is well, will be well taken care of uh, when they engage uh, home -based services. Yeah. Yeah, you is, yeah, you can yeah. continue. Yeah. And then normally is when you request for a visit uh, after the care assessment, after the payment and everything, um, it will take us about two to three days to arrange a, a caregiver la, or nurses. Um, but uh, so one thing for sure is we are not an emergency service. Uh, we do, we, we are not like, uh, as you want, you call us and then we arrive. It's not like that. So it need to be pre-arranged. Uh, so if you have any emergency situation or you know that you need medical attention straight away, we will still uh, advise you to go to the hospital. Lah. And uh, the other good thing that is, uh, I find it is very useful for all the family is actually our app. Because, um, you know, sometimes your children or your family at other part of the town really wanted to know how are you doing today? Right, and by the care by the care care pro going to your house, uh, do the visit. They can actually record down all the details of the visit on the day, and then you know the pictures, take the pictures and everything, and they can upload onto the app. And then your your family member just need to download the app, and they will be able to see all the things that is going on for today. So I think it provides a lot of reassurance to the family members who are especially who are in overseas. Yeah, so those, that, that's one thing that I find is really helpful um, for, for us to manage our parents at home so that we know we know exactly what happened to them during mm -hmm. the visit. Yeah. Yeah, any maybe more questions? Think, yes, any more questions? Yeah, I am going back to the 200 hour. Mm. Uh, care package. Mm. Uh, it, it does it have an expiry day? I mean time. We have. Uh, I think. Uh, two hundred hours expiry is. Yeah. I think one two to months. two months. Two months. Two months. Yes. So therefore, you you need to buy your package according to your needs. So if let's say you just need one hour per day, there's no point for you to buy two hundred, oh, because you won't be able to finish. That's where we will come in also. That's, that's our, uh, my job to come in to make sure um, the amount of care that you need and then we will discuss and then come up with the most appropriate plan. Mm. Because we have like 200 hours, we have 100 hours, we have 60 hours and we have 20 hours and then we have a la carte. Mm. So technically, is if you need the care longer, more care, uh, it will be at a cheaper price and the cheapest price is at 22 ringgit. Mm. But if let's say you need nursing care, that will be a difference. So it's depending the complexity as well. So can I ask, um, after you, you, you hear all the services, right? So um, which services is most appealing to you for now? That you think you will need it? No? Anyone you think you need night surveillance that you have frequent fall, you have tendency of fall during the night? No. Uh, I think Joy, uh, Joy raised her hand. You have a question, okay. Joy? Yes, I, I would be interested in the night surveillance. Um, night surveillance. Yeah. So night surveillance typically is uh we, we call it, uh we get somebody to come in during the night uh to to keep you um uh I would say company but rather to care for you to make sure every 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 one of your needs is attended to. So for example, if you have difficulty walking during the night or you know you 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 are not able to sleep during the night. You need a lot of you need to go to the toilet. You need to go and take things, but your mobility is not that well. That's where the night surveillance come in now. So the caregiver can actually help you to uh, uh, for example, take water for you, or if you want to go to the toilet, you need to be transferred to a wheelchair. They can help you with that, so that uh, whoever staying with you can also have a good night rest, and then you'll be safe during the night. So that is what the night surveillance is about. And as for the hours, uh, you can start any time between like 9 to 10. Uh, of course, we do not encourage you to uh, start too late because uh, we have to take into the safety of the K-Pro into consideration as well. So typically, you can start about um, 
9, 10 o'clock. And then the, the shift will possibly end like 6 o'clock or 7 o'clock in the morning. So that is night surveillance. Okay. Have any of y'all fall to... down before? Yeah, I, think, I think we have a question, sorry. Oh, okay. Uh, Sorry, I just want to follow up with uh, Joyce's uh, uh, question. Mm -hmm. So if you take the night care mm -hmm. and um, during that period when the mm -hmm. caregiver is there and mm -hmm. emergency happens, mm -hmm. uh, what is your role? Okay, so it uh, depends what type of emergency, but of course, if you send a caregiver, they are not medically trained, but they know how to respond. So what they will do is they will help you to stay. Uh, for example, if you fall down, they make sure all the surrounding is 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 uh, cleared, and then of course they will call the ambulance and then uh, call necessary help lah, to 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 come and pick you up to send to the hospital. And then so they if will call uh, the ambulance, yes, and uh, will they also accompany the patient? To the can hospital in case the, the family is not around. Yes. If the care hour uh if it's still within their care hour, they can do that. So we will just uh change it to a medical escort. But of course, it's after the care hour, they still can do that, uh, provided that they have uh they do not have uh, other engagement. But uh in general, generally it can be arranged. So we do have cases like that where the uh, caregiver uh, go with the family and then uh, uh, go with the patient, go to the hospital and then help with the registration, settle him in the ward or settle, settle her in the ward and then come home and help to lock up the door and stuff like that. We, we do have incident like that before. That's good to know. Mm. Katie? You got questions, Katie? So I think it's uh there's no more questions uh from the floor. James, you have any question that you want to ask? I just want to ask you, uh, all right. Um there might be on certain occasions. Mm -hmm. where residents might even uh, choose, you know, what kind of gender might they, you know, uh, the caregivers. Yes, or yes, nurses, yes. You know? yes. So if they prefer, okay, I want a male nurse or male mm -hmm. caregiver. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so are you able to arrange that? Okay, so uh, normally if you have a very specific uh, requirement, we will try to arrange that. But of course, it depends on the availability. Because uh, as we know, there's, we, we do not have a lot of male caregiver on our platform. Um, so you, you of course can, can put in the request. Um, but you have to come up with a plan. Like for example, if I do not have a male caregiver for that day, uh, would you want to take a female? And stuff like that. Lah. So definitely we will put the consideration, I will take the request into uh, consideration. And of course, for female female client, right, we always send a female uh, uh, nurses. It's by default. We will not send a male uh, CP to a female uh, patient unless uh, we get your consent or unless you agree to it. Another thing, Wong, I just want to check with you. Mm -hmm. Mm. All right, if there are, you know, certain individuals that uh, they prefer certain nurses, you know, they, they feel that they like the services of that uh, mm. uh, specific nurse mm. and they request, okay, I only want this nurse to come over mm. and, and, and mm. take care of me. Mm. Uh, mm. So can that be arranged also as well? Okay. Um. Again, uh, because uh, I always emphasize is they are on a part-time basis, right? So they do have their full-time job to go to. So it depending how how dependent is your care. So for example, if you are having a acute feeding that at every day eight o'clock you need to be fed, right? And you just want this nurse to come and feed you, but this nurse has got other engagement, ma. So it will be difficult in that in that sense, no? But uh, we do have a. Uh, um, request like for example if it's just a simple check-in visit um, whether we go on the day or not it doesn't matter or whether uh, your time is flexible uh, then it might be easier to arrange the same person uh. but in, in general we do not encourage that because um, when you're depending on the same person for too long right 
um, because these people, they are all have their own life to go on. So when they quit, decided not to come, or when they fall sick, uh, then you do not have a second person to fall back on. Right. So that's why we always encourage, be open. Uh, let's just take up at least two to three people so that they can rotate. And then at least when one person cannot make it, the other person can step in. Uh. But in general, uh, generally, our platform is our, our open platform for all the part times people who are available. Yes. Okay. Another thing, uh, just checking on your 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 credit, lah. Uh. All right. You were like you were saying, okay, it for two hundred uh, credits, you know, two hundred hours, it will mm. go for at least a maximum of two months. Mm. Just uh, look into a scenario. When I have a residence who uh, purchase a uh, two hundred hours, mm, mm. then within uh, within the three weeks period, mm. they collapse. You know mm. what will happen mm. to the the you know two hundred hour. Yes. Okay, so uh, this one I think uh, they have their own term and condition. Uh, if I'm correct me if I'm wrong, Jeff. Um, I think it will refund only fifty percent for the remaining hours. Uh, okay, in the in the event of collapsing or uh, even admission to hospital, right? We can uh, put the we can put the cap on uh, pause. So that means, oh, okay. yeah, we put the cap on pause, and then when, uh, the patient can be discharged back to the home and will continue our care with home insurance, right? then we can then reactivate the cap and so. Mm. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, if the inevitable happens and uh, the the person passes on. Right. Then what is your policy on the, yes, the policy, correct? So in the, in the event where the patient passes on, right? So say for example, if you're a 200 hours care plan, then uh, you have utilizes maybe 150 hours, means you have a balance of 50 hours, right? So the the policy, the policy is whereby 50% of the unutilized hours, that means 25 hours, uh, will only be converted back to uh, the credit and be refunded. So the other 25 hours will be uh, will, will be absorbed like, in that sense. However, uh, right now, uh, this is just this is not being launched yet, but uh, we will be using that absorb uh, 24 hours, right? Not into our bank account, but we'll be using that 24, say for example, this example, 25 hours, right? We'll use that to actually serve the other uh, needy uh, old folks home uh, in Penang, in Ipoh, in the places where we where we uh, operate, right? We actually serve Parity. the needy from there, yeah. So that 50% of the unutilized hours will go into that, yeah. But we will, we will refund you that that the 50% of the unutilized hours should the per, should the patient pass, pass us on. Hmm. How about, uh, uh, Jeff, looking into this, uh, normally, I can understand why you said it's not transferable, but in Green Acres, I mean, we are all residents here, so maybe you can look into a package where only for places like this, where you're going to possibly get uh, a number of uh, clients, yep. maybe you could make it transferable. I'm just saying. It's um, an idea. Yeah, we, can, we, can look, we can definitely look into that. We can definitely look into that. So I think I need to have a better understanding of how Green Acres operate so that we can then um, uh, plan a better uh, better policy that suits uh, uh, Green Acres better. Yeah, so that that it's pending uh, my discussion with uh, Mr. James over here so that we can then um, better tailor-made the solution for you all. Yeah. Coming here in the next two weeks, right, Jeff? So, well, yes. Uh, if 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 not, uh, if it's if it's nothing, uh, everything's okay. Twenty fifth, I will I will come and meet you. Yeah. Is there any residents, more uh, residents? Any questions, William? Any questions from you, William? No. Kathy, any questions, Kathy? Elizabeth just now was very talkative, now very quiet. Any questions, Elizabeth? <laughs> I only can hear her laughing, but I don't hear her voice. I don't hear her talking. Okay. Hi. Actually, all the questions I wanted to ask others have asked, so I'm quite clear. Can answer it for. So thank you. Well, ask more, more, more questions. Yeah. <laughs>
Yes, because they have answered. And one of the questions I wanted to ask was that the same people can be coming to visit. <clears throat> and the, is there a minimum number of hours? One hour. One hour, that's good. <laughs> because others ask for five hours. So yeah. one hour. You can, try that, you can try that out uh, today, Elizabeth. Yeah, I can <laughs> to, to, to work out with the apps. At the moment, I'm fine. I don't need that. Oh, I forgot. You have me right now, right? So you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. And anyway, it was very good. I think what they're doing is a good service and very useful. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, another thing, I'm just asking you when you talk about the... Uh, about the hours, uh, the credit hours, just say that among spouse, can it be transferred among spouse or no? Among spouse or among siblings? I, I think I, if we identify, because the typical scenario will be, sometimes we go to the house, uh, they will tell us, hey, there are two elderly in the house, these both elderly need care for. So for example, uh, William, I'm just going to make you uh, as an example. Uh, like uh, Mr. and Mrs. Low, uh, they're both uh, elderly who stay in the house. Um, at this moment, we will go in, check in on both of them. Ah, then can be done, like for example, if let's say uh, uh, Mrs. Law is, is not staying there anymore, it's just Mr. Law is there, then we can still continue to go in to, to look after. La. So it needs to be identified early. La. Cannot be, uh, let's say, uh, um, let's say something happened, uh, Mrs. Law decided to give it to uh, uh, Elizabeth for the remaining hour. Uh, it doesn't work like that. Yeah. Mm. Just say we put it into a scenario right now. Mm. We we look back into Mr. and Mrs. Law again. Mm, mm. Okay, so we look at a point where all right, uh, Mr. Law bought a credit hours of hundred hours. Mm. All right, then during the seven days period, Mr. Law uh, feels that his wife needs to have attention, so he mm. get uh, nursing service and all that. So after the seven days period, oh well, she's yeah okay. Then at certain point of time, Mr. No is feeling, okay, he needs the service. He needs the service for the next two days. So can he use back the, the credit? If it's the same or, household that we identified earlier, it's possible. We have done that. Possible. Okay, so that can yes. be done. Yes, Another yes. scenario we are looking at, we have uh, two sisters here, but uh, two separate houses, two separate mm. houses, just neighbor to each other. Mm. So the sister will buy 200 hours. Mm. So when the sisters buy, so she is uh, feeling that she's buying it for her and for her sister. Can that be done or not? Yeah. So it needs to be identified early. So of course the care needs to be close to each other as well. Like you say, neighbor, um, you cannot be saying that, uh, okay, one, one sister is going to be here and then the other sister is going to be like, let's say, you know, Ipoh Town. Uh, then no, no. it will not work. Yeah. Yes. It's in so, the same area, yes. but it's only... Uh, uh, door to door neighbors. Yeah. Door to door neighbors. Uh, so, but they will have to. Uh, so, I believe that the understanding is they have to under, uh, you know, identify earlier yes. before they do, before they yes. purchase the hours. Yes. And the care need to be almost similar. So, for example, because our our package it come in ADL package or ADL with nursing package, right? So, for example, if let's say uh Mr. Law he need uh, just ADL, he just need people to go give him food, shower him, that's all. But uh maybe Mrs. Law she need slightly more complex care. Maybe she got a wound, right? right? Ah, then it, it, it cannot be mixed because um, the, the price that we charge for ADL and the price that we charge for nursing is different. Then in that, case, in that case, they will have to buy two package. So back to the same scenario, the sister who stay uh, next to each other, as long as their care fall under the similar category, uh, we can do that. But it needs to be identified early. But if let's say as long as one of them uh, have a separate needs, uh, then it will, it will have to be a different care planner. Yeah, the reason First, is, we'll be sending different people. Mm. Correct. The reason is because, right, for ADL assisted daily living, right, we can send a caregiver who is not medically trained, right. But in a case where there is a wound, that means uh, the particular patient needs uh, a nurse that comes in. So a caregiver cannot do any wound management. So that's the reason why we cannot mix and match. If let's say the care needed is different, yeah. Mm. I think we have a raised hand. It, it was, uh, I raised the hand, but I'm, I'm still mulling on what you just said. 
um, maybe uh, you guys should come to Green Acres to have a look because our villas are actually pretty close to each mm. other. It's mm. not like one is here and one is in town. Mm. When she said that, that's when I realized you guys are not aware of how close we are. Mm. So that's why I'm saying maybe come and have a look mm. and see whether you can have like a different package for us yes. that works. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, like I, I told uh, James that on the 25th, uh, two months from now, uh, I will be visiting uh, maybe together with Ms. Wong uh, so to get a better understanding uh, of the, because Green Acres is something is a, is a village it's a community right so it might be different so uh, let me have a look first uh, in, in two months to come uh, I think we have Joy who raised her, raised her hand now yes thank you Jeff um, I would like to add on to what Rajiv says because my mom lives uh, on one row and my husband and I live on another row so if we bought a care package ADL or let's say night surveillance package and something happened and we needed the service. Um, so you're saying that it would be a transferable if we declared it ahead of time. I mean, the people who mm. are entitled in this package are my mother, my husband, myself. Is that what you're saying? No. Um, no. That's not, uh, because, um, because now you're, you're saying that uh, it's like, you know, you're driving uh, driver insurance. As long as I say, hey, you got driver A, driver B, everybody is entitled to the insurance. I no, it's not like that. So it's for example, um, I still have to go back to the example. I go to the house, both of them will need care. Or potentially will, will need care in both the in the same household or, or very, very, very close by. And then if one person uh a typical scenario will be I have I have a. Uh, I have client in Penang where a couple of them, they are both of them partially blind. So we go in to look after both of them, right? And recently, the husband actually passed away due to diseases. And then we left the wife. And then whatever hours is remaining, uh, the wife can carry on. Yeah, so that, that is how, 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 how it, it, it runs. Lah. So um, in, in your case, Joy, uh, if let's say your your mom need the care and you need the care and your husband need the care uh, and you're staying very close by to each other, uh, yes, possibly we can buy the care plan and then we come in uh, and then at that period of time, we look at three of you. Mm. Ah, then if any of you move away or, or not around anymore, then the care plan can be continued for, for the remaining of you. Mm. Ah. So, so if it's like that, can not. But uh, sometimes we need to really look into details uh, because um, it's, it's hard for me to pin out all this. But like what you said, right? If let's say uh, they are doing night surveillance for let's say your mom, then something happened in your house, then you want this care pro to go to your house and look after, then it's, it's hard. Ma. Because how can she leave this thing and then go to your... Because when the care pro go to a specific job, they we will give them specific instruction, like this is what you do for this person. So um, it, it would yeah. be, um, it would be Not, difficult. It will be one at a time. Yeah, no. it will be one at a time. <laughs> <laughs> it will be difficult for them to go around and, and check on everybody. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. So any more questions? Them so already, I can see. Yep. Yeah, I think I think most of the question being answered lah. So I, I so I feel that uh, when you are here in the next uh, you know the uh, next two weeks when you are here, you know at least I will be able to bring you for a tour around Green Acres, and then for you to understand further lah about about our plans. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be great. Okay. okay. In the. Yeah, in the meantime, no any any more questions from any of the residents? Well, if you have questions, uh, you can keep the questions, and then when when uh, Jeffrey and uh, Wong is here, then I'll be able to share that those questions over to them. Yes. Or you can also always uh, post a question to Pangulu, right? So the Pangulu yes. can always write a question to us, and then we can then answer. <laughs> I think I should change the job description, huh? 
Rachel, put that kampung right now, penghulu. It's nice. After all, you're a village, right? <laughs> yeah, after all, you're a village. Okay. It's, it's, it's kind of nice, you know, to, yes. <laughs> to have a new job title. Okay. Uh, Pak James, Pak James. Uh, Pak James. <laughs> in, in Indonesia, people normally call, you know, call me Bapa James, you know. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, they will call Bapa James. So normal, uh, those people who are the same age, uh, then they will call Pak James. <laughs> okay. okay. So so I think we will we will end the session. So I will just uh, you know. Uh, gather uh, if there is any further questions from the residents during the next few days i gather the questions then i will share it with you also so i will i hope to see you on the 25th yep thanks Bye. thank you thank you everyone thank right. you. Bye from me thank for you. all of you all okay. right okay take happy care bye-bye right. bye-bye happy bye-bye bye-bye nice bye. to see you all. bye